Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the uh, Neutral Zone Rewind podcast. Uh, we are back with the first one of the semester. Uh, we just had our first tournament back uh, after winter break. We had Kent State, the Summit Street Slugfest, with a ton of teams there, including uh, four of the top five teams in the league showing up. Uh, Mitch, what do we got for the scores for that uh, that tournament? So this tournament was filled with a lot of crazy results, and we'll get into that uh, with our storylines. But it started off with uh, Kent State getting a 5-1 to one win over Cleveland State. OSU took down the Spartans 4-2. to two. Akron beats Penn State 3-2. to two. And then it was a day of misery for JMU as they started out with a loss uh, to MSU in overtime 4-3. to three. The Bearcats would take down the Zips 5-2. to two. Ohio would get a win over Bowling Green 3-2. to two. And then Kent would follow up with a 3-2 to two victory over the Falcons. And then talking about the Dukes of James Madison, they would fall in overtime to the Buckeyes 4-3. to three. Penn State would get a convincing 6-2 to two victory over the Vikings of Cleveland State. The Buckeyes would finish 3-0 and on the day with their win over Kent 4-2. to two. The Spartans kept routing as they took down the Bearcats 3-1. to one. Uh, The Bobcats take down Akron 4-3. The Bearcats beat JMU 3-2 to end out uh, a a really good day for Cincinnati and not so much for the Dukes. Penn State would take down the Falcons 5-1, and we would finish out the day with a Bobcat victory, mauling the Vikings 5-1. Yeah, a lot of interesting results. Um, The first big glaring one is Ohio State over uh, Michigan State, MSU. Uh, You know, it's hard to dispute them as number one in the power rankings going forward. They've beaten every single one of the top five teams so far, uh, except for, I believe, GV, who they have not played yet. Uh, But they've been playing some fantastic dodgeball. They took MSU, you know, the previous number one team to a running clock at one point before MSU brought it back a couple points to four, two at the end. But yeah, it's, it's very much so difficult to dispute them as the number one team in the league right now. They are probably looking like the favorites to win nationals. Uh, but with the way that these games have been played so far, it really still is anyone's game. Uh, there's a lot, there's at least four or five teams that could truly win it. Uh, you know, on the opposite hand, you had JMU going 0-3, but every single game was unbelievably close. They took two of those teams to overtime, and the Cincinnati loss was only by one point. It, you know, even though things didn't go quite their way for an 0-3 team, they absolutely are still right up in there. And with a couple more things going their way, they could very well be contenders just as much as anyone. Um, another one, in, uh, OU had a nice 3-0 and day. Uh, starting to kind of look like the team that we believe that they could be. A lot of the talent is starting to click more now, and they uh, they had some fantastic wins over the uh, the weekend. They played very, very well, and I think it's going to be indicative, uh, ODC, just seeing where they truly are in the Ohio region. I think that's going to be a fantastic test for them to see if they can really challenge some of these other top Ohio teams. And uh, BGSU, another one having kind of a rough day, 0-3, um, dropping games to Kent, OU, and I believe Penn State. Um, take a look here. Yeah, Penn State, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, n- another rough day for them, uh, but th- they should be able to rebound. That's another one where every game was just very competitive for them. Uh, not a terrible performance despite the, the results. But uh, yeah, th- <laughs> somehow with uh, with the tournament this stacked and full of talent uh we still kind of have even more questions as to who really can take this whole thing home at the end of the season who can win nationals there's at least four or five top teams right now that really can do it uh it's just a matter of who's going to be able to put that talent together at the end of the year uh, so yeah yeah uh, yeah I, go ahead oh i think it's really interesting i want to talk about james madison obviously kent we've played them earlier in the year and they looked insanely good they showed it again even though they went oh and three on the day you know they're i think prospectively it's the next tournament i believe uh beast uh it's in what two weeks two and a half weeks uh yeah it's going to be interesting how to see james madison bounce back especially at their home tournament next and bowling green you know i i think at this ohio region besides uh ohio state and cincinnati at the top i don't really think you can put anybody three and below i mean like, I think this is the best year for Ohio dodgeball ever. Well, like, Ohio's a state. 
Like, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. No, I, I agree. The The Ohio region, top to bottom, is really, really strong this year. And yeah, just like you said, everything after the top two slots is really hard to figure out. Anyone could end up in any slot. I think ODC is going to be an absolute just slugfest, uh, seeing who comes out, not just in the number one spot, but who kind of fills out all of those, you know, three through seven, three through eight spots. It's going to be really, really fun to watch. Uh, but yeah, that's about all we got for you guys for this episode of the uh, Neutral Zone Rewind. Uh, stay tuned in the next couple of weeks. We have two tournaments coming up. We've got uh, the aforementioned uh, JMU uh, Beast Tournament, and then we've got another one at Miami with a couple Ohio teams showing up along with uh, Northern Kentucky. So stay tuned to that, and we will uh, see you in the next episode. Thank you so much.